Well, hey guys, welcome to episode 24 of Lessons and Legacies. Today is Friday, or as I like to say, Friday. Everybody loves Fridays because Fridays mean the weekend, right? And uh, today's actually a special Friday um, for a few reasons. Number one, um, I am reporting to you here from Charlotte, North Carolina, and they are currently calling for potential flurries for the first time this winter today. And it was kind of funny. I was checking on my Facebook feed yesterday and uh, yesterday, one year ago, was our first snow for the season last season. So I thought that was weird that it came like literally one year and a day to the circle of our first flurries. I'm hoping and praying we do get some. Um, I come from Detroit, Michigan. I've been in Charlotte, North Carolina for about 13 years now. And so I am used to having feet and feet and feet of snow and cold and shoveling and parkas and boots and all that garbage, you know, salt, salt on the cars, having to like de-ice the door handles because they won't open, all that junk. Um, I've been here for 13 years and I don't think I've even had 13 snows in North Carolina. <laughs> and I'm, I'm in the city. I'm, I'm by, you know, the downtown area. So um, I know there's a lot of places 30 minutes or so away that actually do get the snow, but it's very random here. And so my kids were born in Charlotte. And so every time they get to see snow, it's something quite magical. They don't know what to do. They've been out there when it's just like, it doesn't even accumulate or stick or anything very, very rarely here. Um, but they'll be out there in their snow suits, like trying to sled down the hill and it's all grass and mud and it's really just sleet. It's not even snowing, but they appreciate that. It's magic for them. And because I haven't had the snow in so long, I get excited for it too. So prayers up that maybe we get to see some snowflakes today. So I went on a sidetrack there, but, uh, it is a special Friday because of that strange occurrences with the weather here in Charlotte. Um, but another wonderful thing about today is I have a very special guest, um, been a friend of mine for a few years and I can't wait to introduce her to you. Um, we have a lot to go over today. Today's topic is going to be the limbo between lessons and legacies. What happens in between, in that little gray space of your lessons being learned and then becoming your legacy you leave behind. What happens in the middle there? So we're gonna dance on that today and I'm gonna ask for some help and some feedback in some areas and hopefully just have a wonderful conversation and a good time. So I am going to bring on my friend, Red Lee, and have her introduce herself and we will get the conversation rolling. Hey, hey. <laughs> the instant you call me over, a child walks in. It's all right. It's all right. So I will uh, let you guys know Red Lee is a mother of six children. Six children and an animal, I believe. Yes. You have a dog. Mother, or two animals. Two cats. Two animals. Cats. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a full house, right? And you're doing this all by yourself, yeah? yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's exactly. a warrior. Well, tell everybody who you are, what you do. <sighs> so I know it's, we could go all day just on what Red does because she does so many things and she's been through so much. She is one of the best mommies I have had the privilege of knowing you and I'd say Precious Pauling, the two of you. I'm like, oh, role model mommies. I have seen you fight. This is a mother who would die and kill for her children like oh, wow. wow for real like a, a mother's love right there <laughs> right I only i'm only the mom that i wanted growing up so i just that's what i try to <clears throat> live by so i'm redley and i am an aged out foster kid um <clears throat> so i don't know if i say that's what i am or that's what i went through because i'm still I'm so much more, I guess. Right. Um, and I'm also like the founder of, of, of Cakes for Kids, which is a nonprofit that um, does cakes for kids in foster care and give them cake decorating lessons as they age out so that they'll have a um, skill, a life skill when they age out of care and not have to worry about getting a menial job and having to 
survive instead of thrive. Um, but but since COVID has made me um, a unsolicited stay at home mom because I didn't ask for this. Um, I've been no, none doing... of us did. We nobody asked for it. You know, that's kind of how we're all in it together. Is like right. we've all had to make do, and we all had to figure out something. So, mm -hmm. it's like, so since all the kids are in elementary school except for one. I have to do all the science for all the Zoom calls. I have to do, and I mean, it's driving me nuts because they have different teachers, different schools. So there's like 15 minutes here and that one there and I have to sign that one in and then it's a lot. And so I, I, I can't go anywhere um, because that's, that's what, I'm all, what I'm doing. It's like the schools are grading me and not the kids <laughs> because right. You right. know, they, they get penalized if they're not signing at, at the right time. Um, so I also, I've started making masks. Well, just customizing masks. I don't make them per se. I just make them pretty. Um, so I've been <laughs> doing that and um, just pretty much becoming a jack of all trades. Because if somebody needs something, then, you know, I'll find a way to make it happen eat regardless. Um, right. And I've had to pretty much, put, I've had to put cakes for kids on hold for a little bit because six months ago I was given a child. <laughs> Um, that I did not have nine months to prepare for. Okay. What happened there? How did that happen? Um, he's my great nephew. And so my niece was is isn't able to take care of him right now. So I'm stepping in because it's it's either that or foster care. And I is out of foster care. I, I can't right. I just can't, can't do good, you know, yes, I have five children of my own. Yes, I have children that have special needs, but I still in good conscience can't, wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I was to be like, oh, well, I already got too much going on. Let it, no, not right. me. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It, it was a journey and that journey is what brought you to Cakes for Kids. And so what is Cakes for Kids all about? What do you do? Tell everybody the special specialties of Red. Your confections, you're a baker. So, and so what is cake for kids all yeah, about? No, no. So it's, a di it's different. It's like, so there's bakers and you have decorators. Rarely do you have somebody that likes to do both. So, you know, a lot of times you can order a cake from somebody and like, I got a strawberry pancake, something, something. And it tastes awesome, but <laughs> it don't look the best. Like the icing is not the prettiest. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It, it tastes awesome. Or you get a cake that's, it can walk off by itself, but it may be kind of dry or something like that, you know? Right. I, I, hate, I hate baking. It just, it's, it's, it takes, it takes too long. So I'm I, the same I, way. I'm the same way. I used to, I, that was a dream of mine also for, a, I told you that. That's why I nice. connected it's with you. Yeah. But I like the decorating, the, the baking part. I got, I did get creative with it and I started adding all kinds of booze into my recipes. And I was like, that part's fun, yeah, you know, and idea. liquor and stuff like that. But yes. I like the, the decorating too, but I I don't hold a candle to what you can do. <laughs> no, yeah, well, when I, when I aged out of care, I was pregnant and homeless and um. They ran, uh, the Charlotte Observer had ran an article on kids that were aging out and how, you know, some of the homeless population are people who age out of foster care. And right. um, so people reached out. Somebody just offered me cake decorating lessons. And I was like, I don't have anything else to lose. I'm not doing anything else because I didn't have a job at that point. So I was like, yes, I got four hours of cake decorating lessons, which was pretty much the, pretty much the fundamentals. Right. Uh, like you know you learn ABCs, you can write books so pretty much it's like i learned the find fundamentals of decorating cakes and so i just built on that and so here i am 19 years later um and i could pretty much do it in my sleep um and i just you're it you're like, insane it was in your to me for free oh my gosh listen, yeah i can, listen, yeah, listen, I can guys, airbrush listen. i can airbrush now all of that so let's let me tell them was it last year that you did sophie's cake or the year before I think it was two it years was the ago. Year, it was the year before I went on Rachel Ray. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, uh, no, you had been on Rachel Ray at that point because I had already shown off your videos, but I was yeah. at the beach for a wedding and I came back like the day before her birthday. I called Red up and was like, I totally thought I was going to be able to do it. Wow. She wants a unicorn cake. And I'm like, just got back from this wedding, a family wedding 
with the kids, Rainbow. 24 Rainbow hours Rainbow. notice. I give this queen 24 hours notice. She shows up with this unicorn rainbow cake. Like I will post the picture in the comments after this broadcast. It was looked like something that like Martha Stewart made and then some, and then a whole bag of these rainbow uh, meringues and stuff. It was the most elaborate, gorgeous cake. I would have, I would have cost me probably 200 bucks to get that in the store. I gave her a, not even a full day's notice. And she whipped together this the best cake I've ever seen and showed up at my doorstep the next day. This one rules when it comes to doing the cakes. I'm telling you. First thing, and we've done cake decorating classes with you too. Yeah. We brought the kids and did the cake decorating on your birthday one year. That might have been last year. Two years ago. That was ago. last year. Yeah. That, that was no, no, oh yeah, not this past birthday. It was the birthday before because it right. was my first birthday party ever. I know, yeah, and it was so much fun. <laughs> And listen, we got people joining us. We've got Brittany Thomas is on. She says, hey, Precious Pauline is in the house. Phyllis Hello. George is here. Everybody's coming to support and hang out and say, hey. I see. Yeah, there. see all the little comments. They pop up there. And, I know. Uh, well, I see. I'm seeing. I'm reading multiple things. OK, I got it. There's the comments. Okay, Precious cool. is doing all her tag, tag in there. But uh, yeah, we got our hey, hey, and our hello, queens. Yep. So what is going on with Cakes for Kids right now? So like the show says, the limbo phase, I was I was in limbo, I, I guess, um, because uh, just just like everybody else, um, we all got hit with COVID and mm -hmm. had to figure out what to do, you know, and like I just saw um, I just saw on the news be it yesterday or the day before, and it said like over 400,000 businesses have closed their doors since That's COVID true. started. And it just like, it felt like a punch in the gut because when I watched that, I was just thinking, I was thinking about giving up. And I was like, but all those other people, like, oh. like I'm, I, I, I refuse. <laughs> yeah, like, because the thing is, is that I felt like a lot of them have, have closed their doors because people get so caught um stuck into doing one thing and then once mm -hmm. they can't do that one thing they're just like oh my god i can't you know what i'm saying and so and that's how i was for a minute there i was thinking like oh my god i can't go and give the cake decorate classes anymore like in person because of the COVID fears because i have my underlying conditions so i'm scared to get it um right we, plus you I, got I a whole people, you have a whole household full of kids and they, I know yes. they have issues, some of them too, that, you know, make them a little more susceptible to that or like higher risk yes. of being hospitalized and whatnot, you know? Mm -hmm. So extra hospital, uh, A simple cold can put us in, put a couple of my kids in the hospital. So something right. like COVID would probably knock them out. So, you know, there's just so much. And I was just like, you know what? I can't do it. But then I was like, you know what? I just told myself, that was how I was feeling before I made cakes for kids. Like, oh, I can't do any, you know, like I'm only be able to do this, that, that, that. And then within two, within, yeah, within 24 months, I had been featured on a TV show. I went to New York for my first time. Like I did a lot of stuff because I was in a, in a, in a, a stage like this, like I guess coiled the jump and to fly. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that's kind of, you know, what, where I am right now. So I plan in, um, Cakes for Kids right now is just planning a re post COVID relaunch, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, so everything that I was doing before, I'm gonna do it. However, we just I have to do it a different way. Um, mm -hmm. The lessons will still be given, the cakes will still be given. We just have to find the safer, you know. Was before I was following the food safety rules as it was, but now we have to follow food safety plus COVID rules, and so now that's a, a little bit more that we can um, that we're. Re with the relaunch, we are going to sit down and have like an open a round table and just, you know, talk, bounce ideas off each other to make sure that we're not one of the organizations or companies that is going to go down because of COVID. Because that's, it's something that is still needed because I give those cake decorating lessons and they're, they're for the foster kids, they're free. And it's mm -hmm. one of those things that it's like opening the door because once you open that creative eye of, on someone, you never know where it'll lead them to. Like I started doing digital art since I've um, since I since COVID. Like I just literally learned how to do digital digital drawing, and, and before that, I was like, I can't even draw a straight line. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> and you're good at it. Little things yeah, like that, it'll help you. 
you're good at the digital stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 learning and I'm learning pretty quickly. Yeah, like and I'm like, look, and I'm so proud of like I feel like one of the kids like, yes, I did that, yes. So and and I love giving that feeling um to keep like when I do my cake decorating, like even when it's like a short session, 30 minutes or an hour along, when a kid when a kid gets the basics of a rose. They're so like that lesson. Like they, those kids were so proud. They didn't want like the rose to fall off. They didn't want to eat it. They just wanted to look at it. You know what I'm saying? And like when you when you put that smile on somebody's face and you see how proud they are of something they did, you just want to continue to give it forward. You know what I'm saying? So that's what yeah. I'm doing now. Well, have you considered doing? <clears throat> excuse me, your cake lessons virtually. Yes, yes, and and that's what I'm trying. That, so now there's so many platforms. <laughs> I can um, help I'm you. So, I can yes, help you. Let's, I, I, we'll I have to figure that out. I've got an idea for you. I've got an idea for you. It won't cost you anything. I'll set it up for you if you want to go that way. I'll do it for you, and uh, maybe yes, that would be freaking yes. awesome. I have ideas. <laughs> we can work on that. I, I was sitting here brainstorming as that I was. That would be. You, I'm, like, I'm, I'm wondering on how to get them the supplies. Like, I'm wondering well, how to get the supplies to people. Yeah, I have ideas on that, too. Let me write a note down. I do have ideas for you on that. I That crossed my mind. And I have another person who's recently gone through this. Um, I'm not going to shout names out right now. but Revamping? Uh, who, who went through this revamping? needing to get supplies to people in order to do a virtual class and what that all entailed and whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, let me just make a note here. Uh, as classes. Okay. Got it. We'll talk because I, I think I got some good ideas for you. So, um, yeah. So you're looking then, you said you were talking to me earlier about wanting to like redo your board and stuff. Are you looking for people to help and volunteer and assist in any way with the relaunch? Yeah, I need, here? yeah, I need, I definitely need, uh, I need a whole new board because, because this last year in, in has been, like ridiculous. So when my initial board, um, you know, we pretty much were, were winging it and all that stuff. So now I need a board that knows a little something, you know, mm -hmm. like with some experience, however, because right. now I have some experience under my belt. And so my training wheels, it's time for them to be off and it's time to, That's right. girl, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I need, That's right. I need people that have been experienced and that have been in boards before because my previous board, didn't have any and, and no 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 disrespect to them like they were there when i needed them absolutely but we've outgrown each other and and they had to do this same thing that i'm doing and have to figure out like hey because of this my time is different now i have to start doing this you know what i'm saying so right now we just have to get start fresh and new and it's, and it's cool but we definitely need like a brand new a new everything so that's what like board members just like Four or five people, or it has to be an odd number due to voting, but an odd number of people <laughs> that can help um, <laughs> be a volunteer board. It's so timely, right? It was just so timely with the voting comment there. But um, so if people wanted to get in touch with you, are you looking for people to volunteer for this? Like if somebody wants to yes, reach, raise their hand? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, tell um, me, how can people absolutely. get a hold of you so I can put this up? Uh, they can just te texting is best because of kids. Okay, but um, hold uh, on. Seven zero four two six four. Oh, seven zero four. Go ahead. Yeah, answer the phone. Two two six four. Uh huh. Five six one two. That's not our door, is it? Somebody's banging on the what? neighbor's door. Daisy Carson, I'm gonna move in two weeks. Text. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, my kids. <laughs> no, you're good. What's the last four of your phone number? Five six. Five one, six. Two. One two. One two five six one two. Okay. All right. Ooh. Text Redley Red Lee yeah. to volunteer. Uh, cake for kids. It's not at our door, though. All right. There we go. Okay. I will scroll that on the bottom there. Where did it go? 
There it is. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay there. All right. So if anybody out there does want to raise a hand and help volunteer and be part of the board or assist in any way with the relaunch of Cake for Kids, if you have any resources or knowledge or, or anything, you want to pass or anything on, yet. we, or we definitely already have our 501c3 status. Uh -huh. um, so that part is done and, and it's, it still carries over. Um, so we definitely need people who are uh, familiar with fundraising, who are uh, definitely definitely familiar with fundraising, because I have ideas of some e events and stuff like that, especially now that they're virtual now. So I have like a hundred ideas, but you know how we can think ourselves out of something. I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I, I need everywhere. somebody who, is, <laughs> who has, has thrown a couple of th fundraisers so that like, oh, okay, this this is how we can make this work because right now because I have so much going on. My issue is, is I'm trying to take on everything and I'm learning how to delegate tasks. So if yeah. I have a fundraiser person, I can say, hey, these are some things that I'd like to do and, and give it to them so right. I can still go, you know what I'm saying, and not become a gray-haired old lady at 35. <laughs> yeah, and that'll make that'll make a huge difference in your world. And I'll tell you what, collaborating is everything. And I particularly yes. love throwing fundraisers, and that is something fun for me. So maybe I will raise my hand for that. I love doing it. I've done it through the community for years. Yeah, I have, I have years, huge so. ideas for because because kids for kids, my organization. There's there's not another one like us locally. So it's not like I have a whole lot of competition when it comes to right. doing certain things. So being the first, I'm fine with being the first in, in, in breaking you out. That way. So, yeah. You are, you're the first Red Lee I know. <laughs> and Precious says, yes, you can make your business digital. Trust me, it's worth it. It's and she'll tell you it's true. Brenda Booker Bulls in the house. It might make, I figured that it might make me a little bit easier too. It might It'll be a lot a easier because easier. I won't have to find like the child care like I had, you know before. You did, that's what I'm saying. You can do everything right out of your yeah. house, you know, and then you don't even have to worry about the health permits and stuff. Bake the cake in your own house, and you know we can right. work and this out. Yeah. You know we can figure that out. I'll help you with that. And Precious says, one too many is spending your time wisely. Loving you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah. So if anybody wants to volunteer, again, Red's uh, phone number is right at the bottom of the screen there. Text her if you have questions or if you want to sow a seed, if you want to put some funding towards it, because obviously if she's going to go virtual here, she is going to need to find a way to facilitate her, her sub baking supplies out to these people, whether that's yeah. either she's driving and dropping them off or having someone else do that or shipping them. So uh, maybe you could text and find out what that cash app is and you can sow a seed that way and say, hey, um, I can help this way. Here's ten dollars. Here's five dollars. Here's twenty dollars. Here's a hundred. Right. You know, and that will take the burden off of her to handle the shipping, and then she can be able to facilitate this at home with her six kids, not have to leave the house, do it all virtually, and not have to worry all, about all that. You see how far a couple bucks can go and be a blessing. I'm just saying, use that number down below seven zero four. Two six four five six one two. Reach out to Red Lee and see how you can be a blessing. Okay, whether it's time, finances, whatever you can offer, a drive, or just you know, any ideas. You know, ideas. Like, yeah, resources, resources. Yeah, like, if you got ideas that you could point her in, and be virtual, a somebody who's good with cameras or something. Or right, right. <laughs> yeah, just pop it in there. We're out here asking for assistance on that. So. All right, so that's where you're at in the whole limbo phase of things, right? Let's see. Um, what, so what did you have to do this year to kind of, do you feel like you're bouncing out of that limbo or do you feel like you're still in it? I feel like I got one foot in, one foot out. One you know, foot in, one um, foot out. Yeah. What do you think would help you or what do you think you need to like get over the hump of learning this lesson here the reason i think it's 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 the the delegating of tasks um because i've been alone so much um yeah. and always having to do stuff myself that like i automatically am in, in taking it from myself 
And then I have people that say, well, I want to help. And then I'll be like, I'll be like, well, I want them to do this, but this is not their business. They don't want to do that. That's the, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll just, right. I'll, I'll be like, well, they got enough going on. I'm not going to bother them with this. And here I am carrying 18 backpacks and they got one and they're like, well, let me get grab one. And I'll, you know, so I'm, I'm coming to a, a, a acceptance of accepting people, accepting help, be it, um, However, people choose to help me and not be too prideful and be like, okay, well, I don't need their advice because da, 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 because they're not in the same business as me. But business advice is business advice regardless. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it, it and you know what? It somewhere. It's great when you can receive that and not have to pay for it. I'm just going to throw that out here. Right. This is an open yeah. platform. And anybody that is watching this in the replay later, Please pop that comment in there because Red and I talk all the time. We are we text a lot, actually. <laughs> and yeah, so if you can reach out to me or her, both of us are in this feed. So put it in the comments. Find a way to reach out and, and touch base. We we would love guidance and help from either anybody that wants to put it in there. You don't have to be live right now. And Precious says, <clears throat> Oh my goodness. Okay, wait. It says, yes, as moms, we can do business and mom in the same space and not mm -hmm. rob ourselves or our I'm children. The whole reason I began I Choose Me is that so we can have the best of all worlds because we deserve it and we became our own magic. Amen. And that's true. That's true. I've watched you too, Red. Like you're one of the most yeah. magical people I've ever met. I think the first time I like shared the same physical space with you was at um lisa's lisa santiago's it was a workshop in january a couple years ago and you came in a little bit late towards the end and you sat down right next to me and dr deborah was on the other side um precious was there um i don't remember i, I think it I was for a planner or something <laughs> but you had the long pink hair going in the crown i was like who's she Mm -hmm. I like her already, <laughs> but that we didn't, we didn't even talk. That, <laughs> right. We didn't even talk that time. We started, I think talking online after that and then met some, I think maybe at the park was our first time after that. Oh yeah. 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 Well, yeah. That's With what the kids, kids. the kids are. Yep. Wanna, can we go to the park? Nuts. And mm -hmm. that time that we lost Ava and then we found Ava in the sandbox hanging out like this and we were yep. like, really right now? <laughs> Yes, and that's where I learned about putting name tags on your children. I learned that lovely yeah. tip from you. If you ever go to the park name on, tag the phone day, on the back of your kids, name tag phone <laughs> number. So if they do end up uh, in a sandbox down below where you can't really see their heads and whatever, you know, like somebody that. will know. Somebody will know where to find mommy, you know? <laughs> so, um, all right, let's see. What's. Uh, Oh, I wanted to say too, I had to bring it up. Okay, so the show is Lessons and Legacies and it is based off of my new book, Lessons We've Learned, Legacies of Life. And I uh, have to say, whose Where's daughter is in Where the book? With a part two. <laughs> whose daughter is in the book? Madison, one of your girls has a poem in the book, doesn't she? I gotta read it. I gotta read it for everybody. Little Madison, yes. she was 11, I think, when she did this, yeah? She, yep. Yes, she's in the love chapter. She's on page 22, which is like, if you watch episode 22, that's my favorite number. <laughs> I like twos and fours, and today is episode <laughs> 24. Yeah, so uh, yes, it's on page 22. I gotta read this. This came from one of Miss Red's five children. Her name's Madison, 11 years old, and I got to see, I have a picture of her on my phone, but it probably would take me too long to like scroll through. Red sent me a picture yeah. of her holding the book with her stuff open. She didn't even know that she had been published. She was so in the proud book. of it. She didn't even know. She didn't even know. Yeah. It was I so told cool. her, but she, I guess she forgot. Like I told her about it before. Well, you know, 11 year olds. I have, I have a nine going on 10 year old at this point now. And they're very, ee fleeting you know <laughs> but i think that was my favorite exactly. picture I asked, I asked so many people to take take a picture when you get the book and her picture she was just 
like lit up from ear to ear. You could see how proud and happy and stoked mm -hmm. she was. And I still keep that. I sent it to my mom. It just brought my heart so much joy to see her smile. But let me read this to you guys. This is from Red's daughter. And the name of the poem she wrote is called, You Turn My Frown Upside Down. You are the world's greatest mom. You cheer me up when I am down. You cheer me up when I have a frown. You turn my frown upside down. <laughs> you make the best food, but I just hate when I can't take the leftovers with me to school. You're the prettiest mom I've ever known. You even look better than Raven Simone. You do <laughs> your hair in the very best ways. When I look at you, it pushes me back a few days. So you are the world's greatest mom, and I want you to know that I will always love you. Love, Madison. I thought that was so, so stinking sweet. So yes, that's Madison's page in the book there. It is, and it's surprising. It's surprising because it's the one that she's hitting puberty. So we bumped her oh, yeah. so much. And for her to write something so sweet, I'm just like, what? You do love me? What? <laughs> I have to pull it out every time we have a rough one. I'm like, let me, let me go. There was a time that she did love me. Let me read it right here. Right, right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, and I, I will second you on that one because my oldest, like I said, nine going on 10, she's started going through that this year, too. And I've become the the chosen target, you know, the most hated one. Like, there's nothing I can do right. And I, I could yeah. try my best, feed her treats, I'd do whatever. Like, I, there's nothing I can do. And I'm still I like... Know. And no. it, it breaks my heart, but no, there but are the no moments. One. There's those moments where they will just come on out and like give you a hug for no reason. Like you haven't touched me in three weeks. What's going on? Did you put a kick me sign on my back? What yeah. is that? No. <laughs> oh, mama, you're so pretty. I'd be like, um, yeah. I what you want. What do you, what, yeah, what, what do you, you want? Me for? <laughs> what do you want or what did you do? It's one yep. of the two. Yep. What do you want? What yep. That's a little suspicious kid. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wilson's joining in. That's part of my uh, part of my husband's family, my family. Um, he's in Tennessee right now. He says, what happens between our lessons and legacies? Life. It's true. Very true. It's true. And I like that. It's so simply put, but there's so much that life encompasses, right? When when they say life is in session. Man, it's in session, right. and that's that involves so no much break. finances and the lack of sleep, and maybe not taking the best care of yourself. And if you're a parent, and the kids, right. and the schooling, and I'll tell you, my um, my limbo zone. And I appreciate that you mentioned um, and brought up how tough and difficult it is doing the schooling right now for the kids. Um, I have homeschooled my kids since day one. However. This year, we had planned to send them, like in this past summer, like in 2020, they were supposed to go and do the thing. Yeah. And so we did go it's ahead. just your luck. Yeah, I know. Well, even so, I was like, okay, well, wait, I'm still going to go enroll them. We'll get the little Chromebooks and we'll do it from home and they can get used to like seeing faces and taking instruction from teacher. And mm -hmm. then I thought, well, that'll be a good icebreaker. We... The three of us, myself and my two daughters, had never cried more tears in the two weeks we tried it than our entire <laughs> lives combined. And like you're saying, I don't know how the hell you're doing it with five kids. It was my kids are in two different grades. One's in third, one's in fourth. And you have to literally log them in with these ginormous passwords in multiple sites at the same time yes. or they're late. And you have to do that yes. every time you switch a class. So when I was the homeschool mommy doing it from yep. the workbook, I can be like, here's the instruction, do the work. I'm going to go do the dishes. Be back in 15. We'll review. We'll go over it. Yeah. No, you can't leave because then there's equipment glitches and, oh, my, my, my Zoom went offline. I can't find my teacher. My screen's blank. Nobody right. can hear yeah. me. Oh, my God. The internet's, not, the internet's not working right. Hmm. And then the fact that they 
it, then the fact that I had to upgrade my internet to accept all these devices. And mm-hmm. so I had to put out more without getting more yes. income. And the government's wanting to talk about this little six hundred dollars. What what is that? What? <laughs> like yeah, it is exactly. there's so it is so much. And I and and the and the thing that's taking me off the most is that the schedules keep changing. It's like a weekly different schedule. Now, if they were all the same, then I could go and Alexa and be like, all right, this it could tell I could it could put an announcement, hey, such and such is time for you to sign into this class. All right, that's cool. Okay. But it changes weekly, sometimes day to day, because the teacher will be like, "Well, my kid's sick today, so then it then there's a whole nother schedule because you know, your kids are going to go to this teacher's class, and it's just like it's a lot, especially for kindergartners and first graders. My preschooler is in virtual class. I can't, oh. I can't force my. I can't, what are you? Am I stapling them to chairs? Mm-hmm. All I'm hearing most of the time of the day is come back or can you find a quiet spot? And I'm like, dude, this is the quiet spot. <laughs> like, right. like, yeah. What else do you want from me? Well, they, I mean, they were even doing their gym classes virtually too, where like set your yes. tablet on the couch and try to dance around the living room and not yep. kick your sister yep. while she's trying to do and her math neighbor, lesson. It's insane. Not the, yep. Mm. And I'll the tell you what, not too. like, can you keep it down? And I'm like, how? <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to do? Right. The uh, yeah, it's it's just nuts. And and the other thing too is like, especially for these younger kids, like I feel like the um virtual learning works pretty good for like the high school kids, you know, older, they're more independent mm-hmm. and all that stuff. They can take an assignment, do it, and come report back. They know how to use the stuff, whatever. But for these other kids, our younger kids. They need to be active. Oh, my gosh. The kids are sitting at the computer for eight hours a day. Do you know how much people get paid to sit and stare at a computer screen? How do we screen? go from limiting screen time? Yeah, that's what the doctor said. To screen time until now they're stuck in front of the screen. So mm-hmm. my kids, guess what? They've gotten, they're, they're getting headaches now. One yep. kid might need glasses now. And then yep. my biggest, my biggest problem, I'm all about positive mental health. I'm all about mental health. Me My too. biggest concern is their social emotional learning. You, they, they can't, how are they going to know how to act in public? Because I can't take them really in public right now, right. you know? So when, when this is all said and done, we're going to have a, a whole lot of people and a whole lot of kids. They're going to, are you too big for that? No, they're not. Because there was a, a time in their life that lapsed that we couldn't teach them the social right. cues, the social etiquette, and we're gonna have to all be patient with each other because I have my one with autism. Her her biggest struggle is social cues. People are wearing masks now, so you can't see them smile, you can't see them frown. So she is is putting a damper on her social learning too because she can't tell. You know when people are talking to her, she can't tell their their facial expressions, so she doesn't know how to react to it. You know, and it's confusing. Right. To her and it, and my nephew, he's trying to he's he's eighteen months. He only says mommy and no, and so we're trying to get him to, to say more words, but he needs to watch people's mouths as they talk. Right. Wearing masks, so you know what I'm saying. So this is it is so. And then my kids are like me. We are extroverts big time. Like this this staying at home stuff is just I can't. It's driving me nuts. Right. However, like and and the thing is is that between me, their therapist, and their primary care doctor, we have decided like when they go back to school, even though they have underlying health conditions, the the risk of them may or may not getting COVID is is less than the risk of them falling behind in a, on a social standing because it's dampering, it's giving them depression. Like my, my right. children, you know what I'm saying? Are, are, and, and that's just like, would you, would you want a healthy depressed kid? <laughs> or do you want them to have lived their life to the fullest? And okay, they, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, it, which one do you choose? And like, we literally, you definitely making a, a choice between a rock and a hard place because it's like, all right, they have asthma, they have a blood condition. If they were to get COVID, this is what's gonna happen. But then again, when these are the parts in lives where they're they're learning how to deal in a safe and controlled manner, how to deal with those emotions. But if they're constantly being dampered and, and and if if the parent is stressed that's trying to show them how to react as right. well what else like you know we're raised we're, oh i'm so scared for this next generation girl because this is a mess it is a mess but here and i like that you brought that up too i mean 
at the parents as parents are going through a lot of stress and anxiety as well a your finances the the technology the how to make it all work but you know it, it's hard I, I have additional stress on it because I do find myself at times projecting more than I should. Like yes. my kids are hearing and seeing more than they should. Like mommy's stressing about yeah. the more getting paid or, mm -hmm. oh God, or this or that. They're seeing that. I can't, you know, I, I can't just shut it off. You don't want to yeah. like suffocate yourself. You do have to let some of it out, but they are, I can't hide it from them completely. I try to censor, but then I, I turn back on myself and I have even more stress because I'm like, oh shoot, I should probably should have wrapped that up a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? And uh, um, so that's just like extra yep. bag that we carry, I think in the parental world, the extra stress as well, but we will get through it. This year is, is going to be a reset. You know, that's been talked about on a lot of people's shows yeah. this year um, among my friends and stuff like this is supposed to be the reset. We did all the learning last year on what this is and how we can transform our situations and adapt mm -hmm. to our circumstances. And now this year's like, all right, we've got it. Let's go. And we just have to, like, adapt. It's humans. You know, we, I look at how many right. of all all the generations and hundreds and centuries and hundreds of years and centuries we've evolved. We will evolve through this and our kids will evolve through this, too. I don't think it's lost. Yeah, and this and I the feel first pandemic part of it, ever either. So. Right. And I feel like part of this is going to help our kids be a little bit more resilient than we were because we didn't go through that as kids. But like, resilient, yeah. I feel like maybe them having this experience younger with our protection, like they're seeing what happens to the world. They understand what can happen. But like you said, they are in a controlled, protected environment by being at home. For a lot of us, anyways. I know that this, like when it comes to abusive situations. Girl, stuff, That's a whole nother. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's got its effects, but I think, honestly, I mean, this pandemic has had a lot of positive effects on a lot of adults and, like, yeah. I think community as a whole. And I feel that it might take our, our children a little bit longer to get to a point of embracing that sort of thing. But I feel like we will always be able to go back and be like, do you remember that pandemic? Do you remember what times were like then? Da, 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 da. And they will have that and, and as a strength. We made it through that. Oh, we did have to change everything. And look, you know, it, it worked out. We made it through it. Da, 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 da. You know, so I feel like it might be a good, uh, like, a, you know, the Girl Scout badge you get on your sash or like the medal that the yes, general gets right? in the, or you get yeah. the army or whatever. It's like a. I made it badge, we you know, so I, I, I want to talk to the we, they should all get, yes. you know, so yeah, we should have something like that. Know. It should come up with the, we, uh, I survived the 2020 ribbon of some sort and you get to wear it. That's right. So, so when <laughs> or we like the boomers, the the boomers for the next generation is like, you don't know, uh-uh. <laughs> no. no. I got my, it's like getting a purple heart, right? It's like, I got my COVID badge. We survived. You can't touch this. Yep. Until, I mean, until, our, grandkids, until yep. our grandkids are growing up and there's the next thing. But either way, I, our kids are learning how to adapt to things that are not in their control, which I think is cool. As long as they have good yeah. role models like you, you keep pushing on. You don't let your kids see you give up. You, you, I've watched you. You will go tooth and nail, no matter what the odds are. And I, I admire that. I love your strength. Yep. It's such a beauty of who you are as a mother, you know? And I want to, I want my kids to see me like that. I want my kids to look at me like, well, mommy found a way. She found a way. She made a way. She didn't give up. She didn't give up hope. Yep. She wasn't that's what, I, that's there what I tell them. Yeah. Crying herself to sleep on the kitchen floor every night. Like she might've cried in the bathtub a couple times, but we didn't yep. see it. We might've heard it, but you know, right. she kept it together and she fought. I want my girls to be strong right. and fight, you know? Well, I thought even if you cry, like, that's just a part of the emotion that you have to get to make it through that emotion. That's right. So if that's what you need to do, then do it. Don't hold it back. Do it. And then by the time you get out to get to the other side of it, you it's cleansing. You know, you, you got a new fresh outtake on it because you cried. It didn't make a difference. So, hey, bam, <laughs> what's the next step? Exactly. 
Yeah, and they do. They say tears are healing. T tears are cleansing. I know after I cry, I always feel a lot lighter. I have to just get it out sometimes. Yeah. And I cry even when I'm like overwhelmed with joy. If I'm watching Shrek or Cinderella or something with the kids, I'm like, watch oh, that movie Soul. Have you seen that movie Soul? <laughs> well, will have you crying. So, do you have? I'll ask you one more question here, and then we can wrap it up and say goodbye to everybody. We've come to the conclusion. I like how Jeffrey put it the best. Honestly, what happens between your lessons and legacies, what happens in the limbo, it's mm -hmm. life. It's life. And it looks life, different yeah. for all of us. You know, some of us are parents. Some mm -hmm. of us are not. Some of us are well off financially. Some of us are not. Some of us have jobs. Some of us don't. You know, some of us have social status stuff. Some of us don't. We all come at it from different right. places. But we're all going through life. Right. So I like that. Life is the connector between your lessons and your legacy. You got to go through that life in session before that lesson can turn into a mm -hmm. legacy. So thank you for that, Jeffrey. So I have to ask you, uh, oh, <laughs> Precious says, yes, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Um, what do you want your if, if you had to come up with or if you could think of one legacy you want to leave for 2021. What is one thing you want to do and leave behind? What's your main internal goal to leave behind for 2021? My main goal is, is to get that other foot out of limbo and, and to, and, you know, as much as I'll keep telling myself that, yes, I can do it. And, you know, giving myself the positive pep talk, pep talk is that uh, I wanted to get, us back to some semblance of, yeah, I don't know, like, you know how before there was all the, like with Lisa uh, and we would have, you know, those, those come togethers. Yeah. <laughs> Networking. Yes. Getting to, yes, um, getting to socialize, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. That, 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 was, that was my adult time. So I, my goal is to find some of that, to get back to some of that perkiness that I, that I had before, because like, that's what, like being, being, a positive role model is 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 rewarding for me and so when i get to talk about people talk to people about what i've been through and where i am now and they and that gives them a positive role model to look at themselves like oh well i thought i had it bad well she went through that and well then you know that makes my situation looks like nothing so right. those are the things that for 2021 i want my goal is to try to find something at least like once a month to like if we all got to put on masks and just come together and say what happened, then, like, can we do that? Please Let's get out of the house. house. I'll, you guys can come over here. Yeah. I got a big huge front and backyard and we got the greenway and stuff. We can mask up and do a little barbecue here. I would love that. Precious says yeah. it's about improving right. the best quality of life for you. That's exactly what it's all about. And she says, yes, the doing is real hard, yet it sounds so simple. Mm -hmm. It is. And I miss that too. I really miss right. the socializing. It always sounds well. simpler than it is. I think, uh, like I said, this, this year, I think the legacy I want to leave behind, I, I've embraced the word be for this year, like either let it be, just be, be still, be, 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 mm -hmm. because I feel like there's just a rest in that <laughs> and a, a pause and a don't do anything. Jesus take the wheel kind of thing. Like I'm going to surrender. I'm going to just be. So I really want to embody that this year instead of like, for example, when COVID started back in March, I think from March when we shut down till probably mid May, I was like super dialing into the news stuff every 15 minutes, just in this state of panic and fear. And Oh my God, what's happening mm -hmm. to our world. And all mm -hmm. I did was focus on that. And instead of just, you know, after we got off the whole media hype, we started looking at, okay, how can we adjust? And then nothing's in our control. So just wash your hands, right. mask your face and stay the hell away from people and let it be and roll with it. Yep. And I found peace through that. And I found prosperity through that. I found promise through that. A lot of great things through that. So this year I want to really embrace that and just say whatever comes my way i'm just going to i'm not i'm not going to like not do anything that's not me saying ah, i'm i'm just not doing shit this yeah. year you know? yeah <laughs> and 
Like, I'm just going to not get all up in a bundle over it. I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to yeah. let fear consume and all this fear hype and all this stuff rule my world this year. I'm just going to roll with it and know that I can make a way if needed. Um, that's kind of what I want to roll with for my legacy this year. And I want my kids to see that right. because I want them to be that way. <laughs> so, right. oh, and Precious says one, one other thing here. Yes, always go from your advantage point, not your disadvantage point. And it, it inspires your next step and grace in the moments. Mm -hmm. So, well, I've got uh, just to remind you guys, We've got Cakes for Kids by Miss Red Lee here. She is looking for help, um, resources, direction on how to do this virtual flip and relaunch for this spring um, for her nonprofit here. And if you'd like to offer any kind of help in any way, whether it's a monetary um, investment to help her get her supplies out in order to do this virtually, or if you have resources or suggestions, mm -hmm. or if you wanna raise your hand and be a volunteer and be part of her new board, please give her a text or a phone call. The number is scrolling right below us. And it is 704-264-5612. Please lend a hand. You'd be a blessing to so many, so, so many. And I've witnessed firsthand what she's done and what she does. And I've met all of her kids and her family. I personally vouch like, and, and I've ordered, <laughs> I've ordered the cake. I've, I've experienced the classes. I, she is such a beautiful mother, a beautiful soul, a warrior of a mother, one that I look up to with all my heart and soul. And I thank you with all my heart and soul for coming on the show. I know it was a lot for you because you got a lot to juggle there. And you made my day. And I hope that well, everybody's taking a nap there. right now. So that's making it a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was funny right before we went on. It was literally like, okay, we're ready to go live. And then yep. the baby, boop. Ah! <laughs> my, kids like like, what? <laughs> my kids are like that still at seven and nine years old. Every time I get on the phone, it's instantly <gasps> whack, whack. Oh, mom, yeah. Sophie hit me with yeah, a hug. Like, the door banging on the door. Uh -huh. I want the hug. Like, what? Right. I just literally asked y'all for a few minutes of right. today. Just, just, I just spilled today. milk. I spilled milk all over your bed, mom. Like, She's looking at me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, do you want to leave any last words with the with our audience before we sign off? Well, just just you encouragement. Know, make this year better than last year. Just make this year better. You know what I'm saying? Like we we all thought the world was ending at some point last year. We really yes. did, and now here we are, adjusted, adjusting, and still alive, and still, you know, no disrespect for the people who didn't make it to COVID. I'm just saying, like you know, we're still here. The, a crater didn't come and take us out, or I mean, a meteor. Right. So we are still, you know, and we still, no matter what, we still have a minute to be humble, a minute to be courteous Great and just call. be empathetic to the people around us because you never know what they're going through. Like you just never know what the next person is going through. Nope. Most people don't know that I got six kids to try to figure out their 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 schedule and I still have to be, you know, nice. I have to walk around with clothes on and stuff in my own house. You know, like I can't just get up and exactly. scratch my butt and make my coffee. You know what I'm saying? I got to pay attention be conscious of everything that I'd like, you know, make sure that my shorts are not too short, my my clothes is whatever, because God forbid some first grader sees something, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> everybody just be patient with, with, with all of us, you know, so yeah. that when the kids see us, we're modeling the behavior that we want for them. Amen. I agree. I, uh, I still have, I, I have, the, I've got my uh, pajama pants on. I've been doing it from like, the waist up these days. <laughs> well, I cold. mean, that's... it's too cold. If I go out, oh, no, I, I go out, I'll change the pants. But you know, if I'm in here, I stay cozy. It's cold. I'm at the point. Okay. Well, I wish I want. I, I let the I let them know what if a teacher sends me an email because I've gotten a couple of responses about this and that, and I'd be like, listen, this is life. This is our home. If you if you need my kid to sign in a little bit fast from this place, you are more than welcome to walk up in here and sign them in for you. So, or you're going to accept what we got going on because you right, like the teachers are one person waiting for six people, 15 people to sign in instead of 
they're not the one person signing in 16 different people. You know what I'm right. saying? So, and and then I just break it down to them and ask them the same thing. Can you be a little bit more empathetic and a little bit more conscious of not everybody has one or two kids and making it, you know, it's not as easy. Right. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the limbo zone. I think we're all ready to climb out of right now. Like we've adapted to this, but Jump out. it's not fun. Mm -hmm. We're ready to get onto the legacy part here. Right, let's right. Make this, let's make this whole right. on, online schooling a legacy and a thing of like the past, right? Stephanie Morris is in the house. Right. Live in your PJs. It's okay, Melissa. Hey, I mean, look, I'm 36. Be comfortable. 35 years of my life. I've never. Well, I mean, maybe 30 because maybe my first five years I was living in my PJs, and this past <laughs> year. Psh, I mean, I earned it, right? I mean, pandemic bonus. It's a pandemic right. perk. You get to have cozy pants on. It means, <laughs> it means I can eat more. Right. And I have pandemic pounds to prove that. Oh, my goodness. I'm proud of it. <laughs> it was my right. vacation for <laughs> the last 30 years of my life, and I'll take it. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, you guys, just remember whatever you're going through. Red, first of all, thank you so much for coming on and sharing and being such an open book. I love you so much for that. You're one of the strongest, most amazing women that I know. And uh, your journey is, I don't, I just, I, I am in awe of all that you are able to handle hey. and how much you're able to inspire while doing so. And, and I just I need to I hear that sometimes because I forget. <laughs> don't ever forget. And don't yeah. let her forget, guys. Give her that text and see what you can do to help. But um, remember, everybody's story is different and everybody's story matters. If you guys are anybody is interested in coming on the show, I would love to have you. I show up Monday through Friday at two o'clock. Just uh, you guys got to see how knit we are through our any kids on here yet. You know, I've had I've had my kids on and I had the neighbor kid on. And Precious's kids have popped on at the end of a couple of our episodes, but yeah, you can bring the kids on. Little, like some little kids, like no, I want you to do like fun, like funniest something with some little kids, like my five year old. Like that would be hilarious because the stuff yeah, well, that they say. What we could do is I can link, I can link my kids in and have your girls link in, and there could be the mess of them on the two screens, and then we could bring Precious's kids on <laughs> third screen. Yeah. And just let them all go nuts. And yeah. everybody that tunes in will be like, what the heck is happening? And we'll title that show, Lessons yep. in Being Stay-at-Home Parents. You know? <laughs> yep. You gotta this make sure that like. the groups, yeah. You know? And then have them this all, what it's like. and then just say that there's, everybody gets the same drink, the same amount, and then watch them complain over if somebody got mm -hmm. more than the other. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Oh, she touched my glass. I need a new glass. She touched it. She didn't even drink out of it. She touched my cup. <laughs> you know what? You know what I tell my kids with with that. I, I I don't know. Like, listen. This is what I tell my kids when they're like, "Oh, she dropped off that." Listen, you all touched mommy vagina on the way out, so you're all fine. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like, that's the conversation I have. And after that, they shut up. <laughs> I like that. I might try that one. It would it would blow. I can see my kids' faces right, right now. Like. <gasps> Yep. Did she just? Did she? I and even do it in at, public. I, I've even said they it would look at. <laughs> they would look at daddy, and daddy would high five me and be like, "There you go, mom. There you go. That's how you do it. That's how you get them." <laughs> <laughs> so listen, guys. This I want you to remember: there is a blessing in every lesson, and sometimes that takes a little longer than we want it to, and we get stuck in that little limbo zone. Don't be afraid of the limbo zone. Use it. Use it for a time to brainstorm, to reach out, to grow, and help each other out. And just know that your stories matter. If you want to come on the show, reach out to me at lessons and legacies at g or lessons and legacies at gmail.com. You can visit my store and order a copy of my book at lessons and legacies.company.site. I'll pop that in the comments. I'll get below. Madison to sign her page for you. Yes. And I yeah, I would like for you actually. We should do that with the kids. Bring them back on. I want her to read her thing. And I want to see her little sweet face. Oh, yeah. And I got to post that oh, picture. I'm going to yeah. see if I can post that picture in the comments below after the thread. I'll, so I'll, see, if, I'll see if you can find yours faster than I can find mine. I <laughs> have mine. I can find mine. Through, 
I just got to scroll back to like July, I think, in my photo reel on the phone. Okay. That's all. So, <laughs> but anyways, I just want to say thank you guys to everybody that joined in. We love you tons. And again, don't forget, look up Cake for Kids, contact Miss Red Lee, and uh, try to find your way to be a blessing to this world. And your stories matter. We'll see you guys at two o'clock on Monday with Precious Pauling and Delila Brown for laughter. Have a wonderful weekend and stay safe.